I was introduced to some really amazing cable management and cable implementation about 20 years ago by a very good friend named Kyle. And I, I remember seeing it for the first time I walked in, I thought, oh, that's that's beautiful. And I'd like to chat with you in this video about what are some of those ingredients to make it beautiful and how it can save you a ton of time on the back end if there's problems that creep into your network based on the work we did up front with our cable plant. So let's go ahead and draw a fairly large building and I won't draw all the details, but I will draw a floor up here and we'll say that this is the wiring closet, also known as an IDF, intermediate distribution frame. And it's very likely in this wiring closet, there is a patch panel, which has a bunch of RJ45 jacks that you can plug into. And then these RJ45 jacks have cables that are connected that go to each of the individual cubes or offices or locations on that floor. So there's another RJ45 jack there, and then we use a patch cable to connect the computers into those devices. So on this patch panel right here, it's super important to have good documentation for each and every connection there. And one strategy is this, if we know this is Office 1 or Office 2 or Office 3, it'd be fantastic if we could label these Office 1, Office 2, Office 3, and that way here on the patch panel, we know exactly where those go. And then in the wiring closet, we're also going to have a switch, very likely a layer two switch. And we're going to have connections off the back of that patch panel that connect into the layer two switch. Now, the benefit is, is that we have these patches from the switch into the patch panel on the back end. So we don't have to physically go to the switch and plug and unplug. But if we need to, it's documented so we can see the LED lights and see if there's a problem, if there's an LED light that's on or if it's amber or green or, or something else that's indicating a problem or an issue with that port. And with unshielded twisted pair, we want to make sure we're within that 100 meters. So that would include everything from the port on the switch up to the patch panel, all the way to the jack in the office, including the little patch cable that's going to be used from that jack over to the customer's computer or the printer or whatever happens to be at the other end of that connection. And then down in the MDF or the data center or where that all terminates at the organization, we're going to have our vertical runs which in many implementations will be fiber. Although if it's less than 100 meters, you could certainly use UTP as well. And that would go down to our device in the MDF, which is also likely some flavor of switch. It might be a layer two switch, or it might be a multi-layer switch. But in any case, it's the termination point for that fiber connection. And then we have servers and routers and other devices out here. And then we have a DMARC that connects us out to the wild, wild world. So that could be going to a service provider or some internet provided by a service provider. And that would be the demarcation point with everything to the left being the service provider's responsibility as far as the connections and everything to the right is our responsibility, the customer's responsibility. So with this diagram in place, let's ask the question, how did those connections get there? Somebody, a human had to put those connections in place, both from the, the switch here to the patch panel and also from the patch panel, the horizontal runs down to the jacks in the office. And ensuring that we have the right pinouts for each of the wires in the four pairs going to the right pinouts so it all works. So we have a few options for pulling this off. And what I like to do is I like to go shopping with you <laughs> online. And let's take a look at some patch panels and take a look at the connections that allow the cables to be run from the switch to the back end of the patch panel. All right, so I was just going to go to like Amazon or something, but I just did a Google search for uh, images for patch panel. And this will do it right here. So we could go shopping at any one of these places, but let's take a look at, uh, at this one right here. So on the back side of this patch panel, we have little teeny slots where we can put each of the wires from the four pairs in and then push them down with a tool. And then that unshielded twisted pair cable could be run over to the switch and those could be permanent connections that are in place. And then on the front side, it'd have the RJ45 jacks that we could just plug in an RJ45 connector. And then those cables connected to the front could be part of the horizontal run that goes through the plenum space and out to the offices and cubes and the jacks there to provide the UTP connectivity to the clients. And notice here this is a CAT6 angled patch panel. It's important that if you're running, for example, CAT6 or CAT7 and you want to have that standard supported, you need to make sure that everything in the path, the patch panels, the cables, the patch cables, everything else is up to that standard because the weakest link could cause a failure or a degradation of service if they're not followed. So if you're running CAT6 everywhere, you'd also want to have CAT6 patch panels. So if we scroll down a little bit here, this is what it would look like from the front with the RJ45 connectors plugged in. And on the back end, 
we'd have cables that went off to, for example, the switch. And down here, this is at componentsexpress.com. Let's check this out. Here's the before and after picture regarding cable management, which was pretty much non-existent, and then afterwards. And we've come a long way with our networking over the years. I remember back in the 1980s, uh, they were trying to use old telephony stuff and some of their connectors to support our networking. And that was primarily because they had a whole bunch of connectors and punch downs available for telephony. So in the old days, they had something called a 66 block that looked something like this. And then it had punch downs so you could actually punch wires into it. But as far as its capacity, it was not ready for prime time once it came to fast Ethernet. I think it could sort barely like 10 megabits per second or maybe even the older token ring. But it was not up to snuff as far as the higher speed Ethernet. So if you hear the concept of a 66 block, think of an older way of punching down wired connections that was used decades and decades ago. In fact, there's still 66 blocks in use, but they're used for telephony and not for data. Now, one improvement over 66 blocks was what's called a 110 block. And with a 110 block, it could support higher frequencies, which effectively allowed it to support higher data rates. But I think it was still capped out around like 100 megahertz, where 66 blocks were somewhere around 16 megahertz. However, for current implementations, especially for doing something brand new, <laughs> we're going to avoid all that. And we're going to use patch panels that are rated at the category of UTP that we need, whether it's CAT6 or 6A or 7. So that if at some point we need to get 10 gigabits per second from our cable plant, if we have everything up to that standard that supports it, it should still work. Where in the case of trying to do 10 gig and using 66 blocks to terminate our cables, we're doomed for failure once we try to get to those higher speeds with those older punch down technologies. And regarding some of the tools, let's bring in another vendor here. And this is CableWholesale.com. Again, not affiliated with me or CBT Nuggets, but seems to be a great site. And this is an example here of a punch down tool. So we have the eight wires that are coming out of the unshield twisted pair. We're going to go ahead and place each of the wires into their respectful spot based on the standard that we're following. And then using a punch down tool like this, push that wire into place, making a connection. And boom, we've just prepared that RJ45 jack with the correct wires matched to the right pins so that if we plug a cable into that jack, we can then tie a computer or a printer or another device and get the network connectivity that we need. So here's some examples of inserts that we could use that would do the actual termination of the UTP. And if we continue to scroll down, they also sell wall plates to support that. Here they're showing the front and back of a patch panel. And what I think is interesting is they have the actual standard, the T568A and B shown here. So depending on which standard you want to use, you can just follow the color codes based on the wires, put in each wire, punch it down, and you're good to go. And as we scroll down, here's a couple of tools we could use to help terminate the UTP cable into those connectors. And this would be a punch down tool that we could use, for example, with either a 110 block or with a patch panel to force those individual wires into the correct slot to make the connection. So here's an example of a kit that has some crimpers right there for making your RJ45 connectors on the end of the cable. And then this one up here is a punch down tool with, with options you connect to it based on the type of 110 block or patch panel that you're punching down. And it looks like this one has adapters also for BIX as well. BIX, B-I-X is an acronym for Building Industry Cross Connect. And so it looks like with the accessories here, you could pretty much punch down into anything you came across. So again, I'm not endorsing this specific product, but the actual tool you'd use to punch down is going to depend on the type of patch panel or 66 block or 110 block or other cross connect system that you're forcing those little wires into from the unshielded twisted pair. So up to this point, we've taken a look at several options regarding cabling and connectors for both fiber optics and for copper. And in the next video, I'd like to demystify some of the terminology that we're likely to see and hear and work with as it relates to these cables that we've been looking at. We'll do that in the next video. See you there in just a moment. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, Head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.